Hi everyone, this is Lee here from ABC's of Anesthesia and today I'm going to talk about what you can do, a simple, really simple step you can do if your anesthetic machine fails for some reason. So let's get started. Now the anesthetic machine is a really complicated device. I mean, when you look at it, it's got this massive console here that's all for the delivery of positive pressure, oxygen, it also has volatile gases that you can run through it, through the circuit into an outlet, the expiratory end, and that goes into the patient. It then recycles gases back and it goes through the soda line to take away your CO2. Um, and then you can also switch it from a manual mode and also a ventilator, which happens and ventilates mechanically. So you can use that positive pressure to fill up this bag, to inflate the lungs, and that way you can kind of dial up this pressure using this APL valve here. And that way you can inflate the lungs of a patient that you're ventilating. Likewise, you can flip the switch and you can have the ventilator going as well. So it's got a number of ways you can ventilate the patient. Now this machine gets a bit more complicated because we've got all these complicated monitors, blood pressure, ECG, end tidal, CO2 as well, um, as well as SATS monitoring. And then you can dial up all these settings on these fancy screens and look at the monitor reading. And one of the things we always talk about in anesthetic training is what happens if this very complicated device goes wrong. And there's one simple solution. After your initial troubleshooting steps, if you simply can't find the solution, all you do is go to your Ambu bag, which is this device over here. So you might be thinking, how can this simple looking little device possibly replace this entire machine? And it's quite simple. As we mentioned before, this is pretty much a device to deliver positive pressure to inflate the patient's lungs. It has a lot of other additions which makes it complicated and really good for having the patient safely ventilated and oxygenated over a long period of time and it's very hands off. I can just set my machine and monitor the patient <coughs> and I don't really need to be there with my hands doing all the ventilation myself. Now this device also does that. It's able to deliver positive pressure through a very simple mechanism. I think the most phenomenal part of this is that this bag is self-inflating. So if I was to compress it like this, it then just inflates by itself. It doesn't actually have to be connected to oxygen to inflate itself. Whereas with my anesthetic machine, this bag here, which I can use to manually ventilate the patient, requires gas for oxygen or air or whatever else to inflate that bag. So right there, it's not self-inflating whereas this device is. So that's probably one of the most remarkable things about this bag, the fact that it self inflates, so I don't need to connect it to oxygen. If all of my piping failed, if the oxygen failed, if the machine failed, if the, there was a problem with the circuit, any part of this if there's a problem with, this can essentially solve that problem in the, in, in the immediate term, it can solve it for a short period of time, and therefore I can keep the patient safe and alive. So let's go through each aspect of this Air Viva or Dell bag. So first of all, I can attach a mask and this particular mask has a little port here so you can inflate it. And that means that you can get a really nice uh, bouncy seal here, which means it can form to the face and try to cover any gaps uh, that might be left. So really great for making a seal. It then attaches to this little device here. And this is essentially a couple of connections and a valve. Now you might be able to see here, as I inflate, you can see that that fish mouth valve actually opens up. And it, so it only allows air really to travel in one direction. This port here now, that's a blow off valve. So generally speaking, that can blow off at low pressures, but you can also put this little cap on, which generates a very high pressure seal. So I think up to 60 centimeters water or six kilopascals. That means if I have a patient with restrictive lung disease or severe obstructive lung disease, I can still use that to ventilate the patient. Now notice that in my anesthetic machine, that valve really is this function here. So this function here, this APL valve, um, allows me to change the pressure whereby this circuit blows off air. So I'll often change that as I'm bagging a patient. It won't be possible to do that with this mask. So what I've got to do is be really in tune with the patient. And if I feel like there's too much pressure in the circuit, as I'm holding the mask on the patient's face, I can just let air escape if that's required and that means that I'm gonna avoid aerotrauma. So really important that with these devices that you're really attuned to what is happening with the patient. For example, if this cap was off and I start ventilating the patient as normal, if I realize that there's no rise and fall of the chest, 
or if there's no fogging of the mask or no end tidal CO2, that means that chances I'm not ventilating the patient. So in that said, I'd probably put this on to make sure that I've got a higher pressure and then I'd start ventilating. Once I've got rise and fall of the chest, I then know that the patient's gonna be safe. And as soon as I feel too high a pressure, maybe my seal's really good, maybe the patient's now gas trapping and overfilling with oxygen, then I just do this and use the mask as a valve to let air out. It's a really simple device, but also doesn't have all the complexities of a circuit. So you do have to be really in tune with the patient. As we mentioned before, it leads into this two liter reservoir, which can hold you know, two liters of oxygen. And then you've got here this reservoir bag. So that's where any excess oxygen can go. So this will fill up slowly during your ventilation of the patient, which means that once you compress and release the oxygen and do that, this provides the res reservoir by which all the oxygen will then get back and train into this to fill it up almost instantly with oxygen. Therefore, if you have the right circuit device here and a really good seal, you can deliver up, you know, up to 100% oxygen pretty much. I think the manufacturer says 98% oxygen if you have the proper closed circuit using this expiratory valve as well. Next important thing, and this is really important, if you want to deliver oxygen, you really have to connect this end to an oxygen source. Um, so pretty much connecting it to one of the variable, variable orifice flow meters, just like that, and turning it on. And if I've got a patient who I'm really worried about, I'll turn this up to 15 liters straight away. And that means that the patient's gonna be safe um, as long as I'm ventilating and oxygenating this patient. One of the traps you'll find in a lot of your resus, resus situations is that this can easily become disconnected. So always making sure that you've got oxygen flow and you can hear the oxygen flow. Or you can see that the, um, the fogging of the mask is going away because of the oxygen flow. It's one of those things that, you know, things can go wrong if you're not really in tune with what's happening around the patient as well. Now the final piece of this puzzle is this little expiratory valve. So this is such a great device because with this little addition, which is a screwed valve, you're able to apply different layers of PEEP. So, so you might be able to see some numbers there. If I just screw this on, I go from five of PEEP to 10 of PEEP, then 15, even up to 20 of PEEP, all by just screwing this cap on which means that now you've got positive end expiratory pressure, which again can be really great for sick lungs. If I want to take all the peep off, I simply put it all the way up and unscrew it all the way up. Now you might be wondering why it's called so many different names. Like for example, it's called an Ambu bag, a Liddell bag, an Air Viva, and pretty much it's from all the different manufacturers. So the first person to make this self-inflating you know, rescue, rescue ventilation device was a Danish anesthetist called Henning Rubin. He called it the Ambu bag. He made it in 1957, so quite a long time ago. Now, another inventor, Asmund Liddell, he, he, was, he was actually a toy manufacturer, made a, another version of this, which he called the Liddell bag. Now, Asmund Liddell was initially a toy manufacturer, but then ended up going into the medical space and created one of these. Another company called the Commonwealth Industrial Gases, an Australian, Australian company, made another device called the Air Beaver. So that's why you hear so many different names for this self-inflating oxygenation device. So that's probably all I need to talk about. Now, every anesthetic machine should have one of these. It's such a great device because it simplifies and solves a lot of the problems that you might not be able to solve immediately by troubleshooting an anesthetic machine. So any problems with the anesthetic machine, you can always attach the circuit, the, the endotracheal tube, or just put the face mask onto the patient to ventilate them with this simple device. And it's because it doesn't require an oxygen source necessarily, and it's self-inflating without positive pressure. You can apply positive pressure in any other situation where you're, whether you're out in the field or in the wards, in the emergency, in ICU, or even anesthetics. So thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please write below and uh, share with anyone who might be interested. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.